Support comes from Mosby Building Arts, a design-build company committed to remodeling the right way. Visit callmosby.com to get project inspiration for any room of your house. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, July 3rd. I'm Wayne Pratt. Ahead, a $220 million redevelopment in Midtown St. Louis is turning a former factory into a destination for food and entertainment. What I thought was interesting is taking a authentic, original industrial building and repurposing it for a completely different use. We will go on a tour of the City Foundry Project in Midtown St. Louis. First, the news. The St. Louis County Council wants the owners of a former mall that houses county services to appear before a committee investigating the lease. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports on why the council has approved a subpoena of David and Robert Glarner. Former St. Louis County Executive Steve Stanger signed a lease in 2016 to move a number of county agencies, including the Board of Elections, to the crossings at Northwest. Council members raised alarm about the move, especially since David and Robert Glarner gave thousands of dollars to Stanger's campaign. Councilman Ernie Trakis says a subpoena of the Glarner brothers will inform his colleagues on the county's presence at the St. Anne facility. We need their testimony at this point in the investigation to determine whether or not legislative action is necessary on the part of the council regarding the continued uh, operation of these leases. A spokesman for the Glarner brothers says the subpoena, quote, establishes the precedent that the council believes it can use its authority to interrogate private citizens. I'm Jason Rosenbaum, St. Louis Public Radio. Also from the council, members have given final approval to a $5 million deal for police officer body cameras. A key hearing on the future of Planned Parenthood's only abortion clinic in Missouri is being delayed. The Missouri Administrative Hearing Commission says it will take up the dispute between the organization and the state in late October instead of the initially scheduled August 1st. That announcement comes as Planned Parenthood has named Dr. Colleen McNicholas its chief medical officer. Acting Chief Executive Officer Kathy Williams says it's a new position, replacing part-time medical directors who were contracted with Washington University. We felt that as we want to expand both our footprint here in Missouri and the offering of our services and increase in doing research, we need somebody who's going to be full-time on the staff. Williams says McNicholas started in the new role July 1st. It is illegal to possess or light fireworks in St. Louis or St. Louis County, even on the 4th of July. As St. Louis Public Radio's Kay Petron reports, the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department is warning officers will be citing people this year who violate fireworks laws. Police say people should check their local laws before they light fireworks to celebrate Independence Day. In St. Louis, anyone who possesses or lights fireworks could face up to a $500 fine. The city police department only cited one person for violating that law near the holiday in 2018. But last month, the department said on Twitter that they plan to issue summons and seize fireworks this 4th of July. Laws differ throughout the region. For instance, people can light fireworks from July 2nd through 5th in unincorporated St. Charles County. The U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission estimates that fireworks caused more than 5,000 injuries that were treated in emergency departments near the holiday last year. I'm Kay Petron. St. Louis Public Radio. We have another July 4th note today. Flooding along the Mississippi River has forced parts of Fair St. Louis to move around the arch grounds, but officials say that three-day event will still be taking place this week. Many in the St. Louis region drive by a big redevelopment project along I-64 every day. Roughly 100 years ago, the city foundry in Midtown was home to City Electric Company, which made motors and generators. Now, it's the site of a $220 million redevelopment that will eventually include a dining hall, movie theater, and grocery store. Lead developer Steve Smith recently took me on a tour of the job sites of the city foundry, which is across from IKEA. How does this rate for your entire career? Can you rank projects like this, or where does it fit in? You know, it's like children. Do you have children? I mean, I, I love them all. So <laughs> I would say my most exciting project is the most recent one, and that's what this is right now. <laughs> so I got you the right time. There you go. 
I think people in the region are going to come here and just be delighted and just look upon it in wonderment. But then I also think people are going to come to St. Louis from other parts of the region. You know, the three-hour drive, if you will. They're going to come for a ball game or to the arch or to the zoo, and then they're going to stop here and think, man, St. Louis has got some great stuff happening. So we just drove in somewhere. Tell me where we are. Describe what it is now and what it'll soon be. Yeah, so this was the original, original foundry. In this physical place where we're standing right now is where they cast originally electric motor casings and more recently the brake rotors. So they made things. They literally melted metal, poured them into a mold, and that's made things. This now is going to be where we're going to make food. <laughs> this is the core of our food hall. What's been the reaction among the restaurant community in St. Louis? It took a little while for some of the local restaurateurs to understand what that really is, because we don't have anything in St. Louis comparable to it. We actually brought in some people from other parts of the country who are doing food halls in Dallas, Atlanta, Denver, to kind of explain how it works from a business standpoint. And once we got started, uh, it has taken off. So this building, this property, stood idle for a decade, if not longer. What attracted you to it? What I thought was interesting is taking a authentic, original industrial building and repurposing it for a completely different use. To me, that's innovation around design, and we are in the core of St. Louis's innovation community. And so the idea of, of being innovative in how we use physical space as an architect and, and a real estate developer is what really attracted me to it. So what we've tried to do here is save everything we could about the old manufacturing process. So as you look around, you see these big vents for the kiln where they melted things. A lot of the rail systems where they moved product around when it was a foundry all remains. We have these rolling cranes over here. We have hoppers over here. As you have gone through this process, what are some of the surprising things you've discovered, encountered, yeah. run into? So I bought this in December of 2015. For two years, there were all these pits. Now they're poured in with concrete that had water in them. And the water came up to the top, so you didn't know, is it a foot deep or is it 15 foot deep? Well, it turned out it was 15 foot deep. These pits were all filled with water, and we didn't know what was underneath them. We didn't know what we'd find. <laughs> would there be bodies down there? Well, two years later, November, over Thanksgiving, actually, my son was in from out of town, and we had finally drained one of the pits over here, and we discovered a tunnel. And that tunnel goes about the length of a football field underneath the project. And so that's going to be our speakeasy. When you think about the scope of this, what goes through your mind? Well, this is part of a broader movement that's happening in the central quarter of St. Louis. I mean, we're right next to Ikea, we're right next to Cortex, we're close to what's happening at St. Louis University, we're close to the new Slough Hospital. We sit in the middle of all that, so I couldn't be more excited and more optimistic about what's happening in the broad central corridor, and very much specifically with, with what's happening here at City Foundry. That's Lawrence Group CEO Steve Smith, who is leading the City Foundry project. The first phase should open next year. We have images from the redevelopment site at stlpublicradio.org. Some really cool shots on that website from St. Louis Public Radio's David Kovaluk. Thanks to him for his help with that project. And thanks to Maria Altman, who edited that piece. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. We are off tomorrow for Independence Day. I hope you all enjoy it. This podcast returns Friday. I'm Wayne Pratt, and from the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this has been The Gateway.
Support comes from Mosby Building Arts, a design-build company committed to remodeling the right way. Visit callmosby.com to get project inspiration for any room of your house.